Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Dear students and colleagues, in fact, because this lecture might be uh, watched by both students and colleagues, uh, good times, and I'm going to just explain what I'm going to explain for today. This video structure diagram, I'll just give a few words, in fact, about the deaf students in Saudi Arabia particularly. We have 720,000 of deaf and speechless people in Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. In fact, this is a great number, and the number of these people in Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is increasing. This makes a great importance for us to take care of this slice of society. The other point also to uh, my dear colleagues, the average uh, 18 to 19 old deaf student is reading at the level of an average 8 to 9 year old hearing student. That's according to Traxler, a study in fact issued by him in the year 2000. That is, if we bring a student of deaf uh, society, you see, and ask him to read, that student, if he is at the age of 18 to 19, will equal in reading a hearing student at the age of 8 to 9. So we should take, in fact, into consideration, particularly when we uh, deal with deaf students. Deaf students increase their reading level, yes, 0 0.3 grade level per year compared to 1.0 grade level for many public school hearing students. That's in fact a study issued by Poor in 2003 and Siding Ellen in 1986. Uh, generally speaking then, the hearing students may develop their reading skills, yes, triple yeah, being compared in fact with the uh, hearing ones. The last point for my dear colleagues also, um, in 2000, Jim Cummings' linguistic interdependency model developed suggests that when a student's first language, both is spoken and written, is well developed, a second language may be easily acquired and learned. That's if a student has a mother tongue, if he can speak, then to acquire another language, a second language is going to be easy for him. And this is, in fact, alas, not available for the deaf students. For the above reasons, the needs for talking or taking care, in fact, of this slice of society is increasingly growing. And that's, in fact, what King Khalid University uh, starts taking care of these uh, people and start the IT section or course in our, um, yeah. For these reasons, the needs for taking care of this slice of society is increasingly growing. And that's, in fact, what KKU uh, has started with. The importance of learning English. Why do we teach English for deaf students? In fact, even for deaf students, it's very important because they may travel, they may study, they may work. So. Traveling, studying, and even working, uh, the deaf students may need this language abroad. Having in mind, in fact, in general, two thirds of the world speak this language, you see. American Sign Language. American Sign Language, and the abbreviation of which is ASL, is not only teaching sign language to deaf students but also teaches them specific signs like finger spelling, basic words, learn, book, body and health signs, food signs, school signs. Of course, some of the words are very simple, like, for example, car. You just, in fact, make the sign of a steering like this, car. Like phone, phone, sleep, cat with the mustaches. Teach, teach it means taking knowledge from your mind, you see, then teach is going to be quite opposite of learn, 
taking the knowledge from the book and put it into your mind. Teach. Then teacher, the agent noun. Teacher, the person. Book. Food. Eat with one tap on the mouth. Food with double, you see. Of course, these are the most important things in ASL. These simple words are very easy for deaf students to learn and also for the hearing students. But some words that need dictionary. And we have, in fact, two dictionaries for the deaf students. The first one is concerned with the words, and the second one is concerned with the phrases, is concerned with the phrases. Um, I'm going to just show you American Sign Language, the dictionary. This is the dictionary. So uh, the dictionary, which is concerned uh, with words only, we have ASL sign language dictionary, and I'm going to give you the link, in fact. Um, here, we have it here in this uh, square. You can just type the word you are looking for, or uh, you want to check it up in the dictionary. For example, door, and you give search, search. Then the dictionary will give it to you. You just click on the picture. Then the person will give you that this is the door, the sign of the word you are just trying to uh, look up. You see, in fact, not only one, but also so many, yes, pictures to reveal the same sign language. Okay? We can try some other words. You just write house, then tap it here, then you're going to watch it. You see? House. House. Okay? Uh, this is, in fact, the first dictionary which is www.signasl.org. I'm going to repeat, www.signasl.org. This is the link for this dictionary. We've got another dictionary, in fact, which is concerned with the uh, phrases. And also, the same principle, uh, sign. Sign, okay. Another dictionary, in fact, which is concerned with the phrases, uh, www.signingsavvy.com slash sign slash def slash 102 slash 1. You're going to have it, in fact, in the lecture if you just want to look up phrases and not words. Now, gentlemen, let's move to something else, which is the alphabet. The next point gentlemen, in fact, will be the alphabet in the ASL. Of course, let me just give you a, um, a very important point, which is the difference between a British and American sign language. Are they the same? Alas, no. But there is a slight uh, similarity between these two sign languages. Um, approximately 30% of the sign language will be the same, yes, in America and Britain. The alphabet, in America, they just use one hand for finger spelling. So they do not use both hands. It's only for one hand, yes, for finger spelling. You can, in fact, find uh, something like this with this site, the alphabet. This is the alphabet. As you see, with one hand only, yes. G. Yeah. The link is over I there. You can just, in fact, start and um, have a look at all the letters in English with the sign language, ASL, yes, with one hand only. They do not use both hands. The second point, in fact, 
uh, has to do with the smart hands numbers. Of course, uh, for the numbers in English, uh, particularly ASL American Sign Language, differs from uh, the British Sign Language. We use only one hand. For example, this is not 10. Yeah, 10 is going to be something like this. It's only one hand. So uh, let me just um, supply in these numbers. With the back of the hand, yes, towards the person you are talking to. One, two, three, four, five. Then six is going to be in fact like this, but the front of the hand towards the person you are talking to. Six, then minus seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. You see? I'm going to repeat. One, two, three, four, five. Then six, you turn your hand, you see towards the spear. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now from eleven to twenty, which is the last group for this uh, part. Now uh, we're going to also explain numbers uh, from 11 to 20 in ASL. Uh, the numbers will be like this. 11, you know that this is 1. So 11, you're going to just make it twice like this. It means 1, 1. 12, this is 2. Then twice, this is 12. 13, if you follow up with the sign language interpreter, 13. See? Yeah? Then 14, 14. Make sure, yeah, that the thump is hidden. 14. Excellent. 15, you just open the thumb. This is 15. 15. Numbers from 16 up to 19 have two methods. So, the first method for 16 is 16. This is twice, you see, 16. Or 10 and 6. 10, 6, 16. 17, 17 also has two methods. Either 17, the 7, uh, 10 and 7, 10 and 7, or 17 and you type it twice. Similar number 18, both ways, and the last one with both ways, 19, 19, excellent. The last number for today is 20, you just tap, yes, the pointer and the thumb twice, this is 20. Of course, one method. Uh, the other point, gentlemen, has to do with the tenses. Of course, in the deaf American Sign Language, there are no tenses, but they can be differentiated by the signs, you see, simply because there is no conjugation of verbs in the uh, ASL. For example, if you want to talk about the future, they cannot say well, you see. Instead, they make this sign, yes, referring to future. This sign refers to present. And this sign refers to the past. For example, if I want to say a sentence like this, I will eat in the future. I will eat, you see. So first of all, I refer to the tense. In the future, that is, yes, that's well. 
then I, then eat. It means I will eat. I am eating, so eating now. I make the tense first, you see which is the present, then I am um, then eating. What about the past? I just refer to the past like this, past, yes, it means I, I ate now, past, then I, then uh, ate. So by this uh, sign, in fact, you can just differentiate and uh, conjugate the verbs if we are to say in the deaf language. That is it. Uh, the other point, gentlemen, will have to do with ASL sentence structure. Of course, unlike the English language in terms of adjective and object, because usually in English we have adjective preceding the nouns, you see. Like when we say, for example, black car. With the deaf ASL language, you see, in fact, we have quite the vice versa. Car, then the adjective. Um, in ASL, we have this structure which is similar to the Arabic language, in fact. For example, ball, big. We do not say big ball for the deaf language in ASL. Car, beautiful. Car, very beautiful. While the sentence structure goes like this, time, topic, comment. Time, topic, comment. For example, if I want to say next year, I'm going to move to a very big city. So I start with time, time in the future. Next year, yes, that's in the future. Then big city, which is the topic. Big city. I start with city, then big. Then the comment, I'm going to move. I'm going to move. You've got so many examples, yes, regarding this, which is called the sentence structure. Yes, in this link, and you're going to just see so many examples if you get into it. Okay, this personal pronouns, the matter is. We explained it. 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 We الضمائر I, he, she, it, you, we, they. اللغة الشعر الامريكي. تعرفه من تالي. أنا. آه. هي هو ونؤشر إذا كان موجود أمامنا ذكر. لأنه الشيء نفس هذه هي لكن إذا كان مؤنث. It إذا كان غير عاقل. You أنت أو أنتم. We بتأخذ من عندك أنت. نعم. أيوة بدك تبدأ تشمل حالك معهم. نعم. They بدي يكونوا هم بدون أيوة. لا تشمل حالك. يا. جاهز؟ Personal pronouns. In fact, personal pronouns in the ASL um, is not that difficult for the students to understand. And let me just remind you of the personal pronouns. I, I, he, you just refer to the person, yes, I'm also going to be male, yes, supposed to be in front of you. He, she, you just also point to the girl here, if she is in front of you. It, for the inanimate, you see. You can be, yes, singular, and you can be plural. We, we, you include yourself with the others, you see, starting from, uh, your own personality, then they, you do not include yourself, you say they, they. Of course, these pronouns in the ASL sign language are also available with the link uh, down. You're going to find them, yes, um, if you get into the 2.45 up to 3.40. Okay. Uh, for the next point, it has to do with the WH questions and yes-no questions in ASL. Um, for the WH questions, the question word always comes at the end of the question. For example, instead of saying, what is your name, then we're going to have your name what? Your name what? 
pay attention. The movement of the eyebrows is very important. So your name, what? The eyebrows are going to go down when we just ask for information, WC questions. Your name, what? You see. While for the yes, no question, yes, for the yes, no question, the pronouns always come at the end with your eyebrows going up to reveal inquiry or, as, or astonishment. Like for example, instead of saying, are you deaf? Are you deaf? We say, deaf you, see the eyebrows go up. Now, the answer to this question is going to be either yes or no. Deaf you, deaf you, see, the eyebrows go up to reveal I'm just asking yes, no question. Okay? Uh, the next point, gentlemen, has to do, in fact, with, uh, with using the technology to learn English. Um, the latest technology in this field was, um, I think, an invention invented by Thomas Preyer and Neve Dazadi, who are sophomores at the University of Washington, invented gloves to translate ASL into text or speech. Indeed, they put sensors in the gloves, you see. So once you just sign, make the gestures, these sensors may transmit these signs via Bluetooth to a computer. That computer will translate these movements into sounds. And accordingly, the hearing people may understand your signs. In fact, this was a great achievement in um, the field of the deaf students. I'm going to watch that in this video, which is done. Of course, the data via Bluetooth to a computer which matches the gestures with its spoken counterpart. Um, the last point, we're going to have some educational games. Uh, in fact, we're going to end our lecture for today with an educational game. We've got very interesting educational games for the deaf students. Um, one of them is called the vocabulary feedback uh, game. For example, I gave the word horse to the students and I want to know whether they really understand this or not. So, in duels, I may just uh, put a picture of a horse, you see, yes, on the forehead of the deaf student, yes, and I say to him, I want you to know what is the picture in your hand. What is the picture in your hand? Of course, he has it like this in the front of me, but he doesn't know what it is. I start giving him gestures, clues. For example, it is an animal. Then he thinks of animals. Then, an animal used in battles in the past. This is another clue to make it nearer to him to understand. Then at the end of the point, in fact, he's gonna, was supposed to know that it is a horse. We've got so many, in fact, uh, educational games. Um, with the link, you have to watch and enjoy watching, indeed, such games. Gentlemen, uh, as you know, we explained how we, in fact, give some grammar and the grammatical points Communicative approach, yes, was over there. Uh, also, uh, we explained things related to uh, reading and trying to speak with the sign language. I explained also the highly sophisticated technology and the ASL sign language, including the alphabets, the uh, numbers, etc. Uh, I hope you enjoy my lecture and wish you the best. Thank you very much for your uh, watching.